Hello everyone. For those of you who may know me, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Diego Salgado. I am a junior, class of 2024 president, and my talk today will be on the search for humility through ego. Ego. What is ego? Defined by Merriam-Webster as one of the three divisions of the human psyche to, to in the psychoantic theory that serves as the organized mediator in consciousness and unconsciousness. Now that's just a lot of words, I'm gonna be honest with you. So let me, let me simple it down. Ego is how one sees himself and their self-esteem. <clears throat> Ego is a common human trait, something born with or something taught regardless of it being infatuated and inflated or underestimated. It's inherent and in human nature. In my talk today, I would like to cover some extreme cases of egoism and also some cases of low self-esteem. I hope to compare the two and find a middle ground in which both would find a, in which both would find one where confidence is not undermining and disregarding achievements, but not be so boastful and airheaded that you eventually lead to their demise. Alexander the Great, born in 356 BCE in Pisa, Macedonia, he was bred to be the best from a young age and being told that he would rule the world and that his sole purpose was to conquer everything. It's not impossible to see where his ego comes from, honestly. He was taught by renowned philosopher Aristotle and from a young age, he was constantly reminded of his duties and greatness. And I mean, personally, if Aristotle told me that one day I would rule the world and be the best, I'd honestly believe so as well. <clears throat> At the young age of 20, after overtaking Greece and the Persian Empire and going into what is modern day East, the modern day Middle East before leading his soldiers into a battle that they didn't want to enter, he shared his father's accomplishments and went on to further say that they were small if compared to the ones that he did. Now, I know that's a lot of words, so basically the man thought he was better than his own father. Many said he died of malaria, but honestly, like many historians, I'd like to believe that he was poisoned by the Greeks. And honestly, if I was them, I really wouldn't blame them. Kafka S. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the word, and for those of you who aren't, don't worry. It's a genre of writing defined by the work of the late Franz Kafka, a legendary writer who was known for his nightmarish and depressing writings that are regarded as classics now, but during his lifetime, he didn't exactly enjoy the fruit of his labor. His major dream, although to become a famous writer, and although that did become true, he wasn't alive to, to see that come into fruition. Kafka wrote in his free time numerous amounts of work, totaling over 100 pieces of literature, and although he did study law and went on to become uh, an accountant, it wasn't what he dreamed of. Kafka being a perfectionist, and to many a man who wasn't who wasn't willing to take the shot and a coward to many, never published a single book. Even on his deathbed, telling his best friend who read all his books and regarded him as amazing and great to burn all his books and all his literature because he didn't want anyone to set a single eye on them. The man died, the man died without publishing a single book and making a single cent. His unwillingness to acknowledge his quality of work, claiming it as subpar and low, let the man to, to die. Now, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Van Gogh. As one of the most influential painters throughout history and some of the most famous artworks like Starry Night, but what you may not know is the hardships in Van Gogh's life that led to him not, to let, that led to him not receiving recognition for his almost 3,000 works of art. Van Gogh, as a kid, was sent away to a boarding school by his parents and asked to come home. And instead, what did they do? They sent him to another boarding school where he was deeply unhappy. His interest of art began at a very young age. And while his mother did support it, his drawings were expressive yet simple. He later on went to say that his youth was cold and sterile. Van Gogh tragically ended his own life in 1890, never making a single cent off of any of his enormous amounts of work. And according to Theo, his brother, Van Gogh's last word was that the sadness continued even up until death. Clearly, Vincent's life was full of mental health issues and combined with the lack of confidence, it's clear to see that he didn't have any sense of his worth. Vincent went on to become one of the most famous artists throughout our time due to his brother Theo and his late wife. Mike Tyson, the proclaimed baddest man on earth and I'm sure many of you are familiar with, and the self-proclaimed most vicious conqueror in the boxing era. Tyson's childhood was rough. Growing up on the streets alone led him to entering a detention center where he was discovered by an ex-boxer named Bobby Stewart who recognized his raw potential and introduced him to the motto, but then became his legal guardian because the motto instilled the persona of Iron Mike into Young Mike comparing him to the heavyweight champions at the time 
Although Mike lacked the height and weight for it, Customato used tough love and reverse psychology to, to constantly tell Mike that he was too small and that he wished Mike was bigger. This just made Mike fight even harder, yearning for his approval. It's even quoted that, that Mike had said, don't worry, cuz one day they'll be afraid of me. When they mention my name, they'll all sweat blood just hearing it. Cuz, in fact, he studied and tried to imitate our old friend Alexander from before. All of his fame and fortune led to the erratic lifestyle that ended up winding him in jail. It's even quoted on record that Mike is afraid of his old self and that he is working on the art of humbleness. Now speaking on the art of humbleness, I myself have gone through it too. I've been very ego-headed and I've been narcissistic, but I've also been very scared of myself and of my work and of my accomplishments. <clears throat> and truthfully, right now, I am still a bit on the big-headed side, but like Mike Tyson, I'm working on mastering the art of humbleness. And I don't want my life to pass and end up being an accountant and I have plethora of work behind me, like Kafka. And I also don't want the sadness of life to keep going like Van Gogh. And truthfully and honestly, it kind of sucked to die from malaria, so I kind of don't want that either. I choose to talk about the, about the great people throughout history that I do so, to talk about and draw comparisons on my own mind and further advance my views on myself. I am but a 17-year-old boy who wants to be great enough to lead people and humble enough to not be hated. I'd like to thank TEDx for giving me the opportunity to get up here and talk. And I'd like to thank Mr. Victor for organizing all of this. And I'd also like to thank my mentor and teacher, Ms. Madame Nassif, who helped me write this paper. And I'd also like to thank my father for showing me what hard work is. And I'd like to thank my mother for raising me to be a dying breed of gentlemen that don't exist anymore. Thank you. My name is Diego Salgado, and that was my TED Talk.